So Rashta. <laughs> Trashta. Beautiful, naive, sweet, and an awful human being. If you've read The Remarried Empress, you probably hate... No, that word is too weak. You probably despise Rashta. Why is that? Probably because she stole Navia's husband, lied multiple times, framed people, and actively tried to ruin Navia's life. But what if we only see her this way and hate her so much because the story is being told from Navia's point of view? Does her past justify her current actions? Does she just have no idea whatsoever how bad her actions really are? Is she just trying to survive? Is she suffering from PTSD? Is Rashta the victim of this story? If you don't know, Rashta is one of the main antagonists of The Remarried Empress. The Remarried Empress is a web novel that has been adapted into a webtoon. It's the story of Empress Navia, an empress of the Western Empire, and FYI, she's really, really good at leading the empire. She's married to this obsessive man-child, but she later marries the king of the Eastern Kingdom and they live happily ever after. I wish. These obsessed freaks keep bothering her even after she's a whole kingdom away! Obsessed much? So in the very first episode, even before we meet this Rasta girl, we get to hear about her from Navy's ladies in waiting. She's referred to as a filthy girl, a runaway slave, and an unkept little thing. She's also described as a considerable beauty, and one of Navy's ladies in waiting says that her beauty was second only to the Duchess of Tuania, and this woman is known to be the most beautiful of all the duchesses. So what do we know from that conversation about her? She's a presumed runaway slave, she looks filthy, and that even with all the dark she's covered in when she's found, she is Belle. Very, very beautiful. Now, I did feel sorry for Rasta during the scene because I thought the ladies were being a little too harsh on her because they hadn't even met her. Like, they didn't even know her. Then I met the actual character and witnessed the havoc she caused. And while I still don't like what they said about her at first, I no longer feel any pity for her. The first time Rashta meets Navia, she seemed disrespectful, at least to me. I mean, she grabbed the Empress's dress and even tore it. I guess this could be excused as she probably wasn't taught how to behave around the royal family. Or maybe she thought because Sylvia should treat her like an equal and a friend, Navia will too. So she introduces herself to Navia and addresses her with no respect whatsoever, despite her being the Empress of the Empire she is currently in. She then asks Navia what she should call her, though I don't know why she believes she could call her anything other than Her Majesty the Empress. Maybe it will be understandable if they had met before and were maybe friends, but keep in mind this is the first time they are meeting at all. You think that because of her past, she would be a little more cautious around people with power, but no. <laughs> she seemingly has no idea what personal space is and reaches out to grab Navia. Not once, but twice. Her heart is slapped by this girl, though I do think she took it a little too far by calling her a name. Then this girl starts crying. <laughs> Maybe you can see that Rashta is sensitive. That's why she started crying. But gosh, this girl cries so many times that I'm starting to think she just uses it as a manipulation tactic. To really understand Rashta's character, you have to look at the story from her perspective. Keep in mind, this first interaction is shown from Navia's point of view. So what if we looked at it from Rashta's point of view? Because in many stories, the point of view can change a lot. Now, it's pretty apparent that Rasta views herself as the victim of a lot of situations, even if she may have caused whatever mess she may be in. I would expect Rasta to believe that she tried to be friendly to the Empress, the woman who she will be sharing her husband with, but the Empress coldly rejected her offer. If the story was told in Rasta's perspective, I admit I would have probably felt sorry for her, and not like Navia, at least during this scene. The problem is that she is the cause of a lot of the conflict between her and Navia. Navia politely expresses her wish to not see or speak to Rashta, yet Rashta does not respect her. Again, maybe she was just never taught to respect people's wishes. She calls Navia her sister even when asked not to. She sits in Navia's chair without her permission. She just waltz in and sits on both Navia's chair and her handkerchief. She also frequently rudely interrupts Navia's conversation with nobles and other royals just to either repeat what Navia said or say some crappy stuff. She makes one of her ladies-in-waiting impersonate Navia by lying about being Prince Henry's secret pen pal and even impersonates her herself. For fun. I believe this is a crime. I don't know if it's a crime in their world, but it's still plain rude. And you know what she does when she's called off a line? She cries. She just cries. Moving on. She also copies Navia and even kind of stalks her, even after Navia tells her she is not okay with this. She later also frames Navia for harming a bird. Trisha constantly tries to bother Navia, may I remind you this is the Empress, and starts claiming that she's scared Navia may harm her because she hates her when she started it all. 
a lot of her actions towards Navia can be explained by saying that maybe she just felt threatened. Maybe she was just trying to protect herself from harm because in her eyes, Navia was super jealous of her and would try to harm her. However, the moment she started attacking others unprovoked is the moment I stopped trying to see things from her point of view. She starts a rumor that ruins the marriage of the Duchess of Turnia and also ruins her reputation. Her reasons for doing this are okay, but not good. She does it to make everyone stop talking about the fact that she may be a runaway slave, and this idea is suggested to her by Duke Ergi, her only friend. I understand that she probably did that because she was scared of what would happen to her if the fact that the rumor was true was discovered. She wasn't in a very s secure position yet, and she was trying to protect herself. I can understand that. Although I don't know why she had to ruin someone else's life just to protect herself, but okay. The problem begins when she tries to blame her actions on everyone but herself, after she is stabbed by an admirer of the Duchess. She quickly went from underdog to villain in my eyes when she started attacking people even though she was in a secure position. She claims that Navy's brother, Koshar, pushed her even though she fell on her own out of fear when he moved close to her with an angry look on his face. She has no need to say that he pushed her but she does so anyway and ends up getting him banished. She frames a lot of people and later abuses her power as empress. For example, she has one of her ladies-in-waiting locked up because she found out the fact that she plucked feathers from Sylvia's bird, then framed Navia for it. She also orders for her lady-in-waiting's tongue to be cut off so she can protect herself. She also embarrasses Navia as a form of revenge for something that Navia did not even do. Overall, she isn't very nice and lies and frames her way out of problems she created for herself. Some people like to say her actions are justified because of her past and to understand why they may think that we have to look at Tractor's backstory. This girl has honestly been through a lot and I feel really sorry for the young Arashta. She has sold parents to pay off a debt and I doubt she ever met them or even remembers them. She was a slave for years and was treated horribly in Viscount Letitia's house. Because Rashta has always been beautiful, she caught the eye of the son of Viscount Flotatio, and I believe he started dating against his father's wishes. She trusted him, and they loved each other. They even had a child together. But then one day, Viscount Flotatio's son, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, decides to dump her. He says he can't be dragged down with her, and I think this really broke Rashta's heart. Then after she delivers her baby, Viscount Flotatio says he killed him. Even though this was just a cruel joke, he didn't actually kill her baby. I think this may have been the last straw for Rashta, because she probably really loved her baby, she decides to run away, broken hearted. This leads me to the next part, my theory. I believe that Rashta is mentally ill. Because of what she went through, she's probably scared of losing everything and going back to her past life. What she doesn't seem to understand is that she doesn't need to put others down to lift herself up. It will actually be smarter to climb the ladder by making friends and not enemies. I believe the reason why she views Navy as someone who's trying to ruin her newfound happiness is because of the way she's been abused or betrayed by people in power like Viscount Latishu. I think Sylvia should have noticed this and Gordon has some help, like a therapist or something. I mean, they live in a world with bird people. Surely they can find some therapist variant, but no. Sylvia, she likes them beautiful and fully dependent on him. This idiot probably only sees her for her face. I think this theory might also explain why she acts like a child even though she's a grown woman. It's her coping mechanism. Or maybe she's just manipulated. My conclusion? Rashta is mentally ill and needs serious help and not power over an entire empire. Or maybe she's just a horrible, manipulative person. So do I think her past justifies her actions? No. There are people who have had crappy lives but are still nice to people. Having a bad life does not give you a past to be a bad person. Do I think she has no idea how bad her actions are? Not really, because she's usually scared of being caught. Though there are times that she genuinely believes she's the victim. Do I think she's just trying to survive? Nope. She attacks others even when they pose no threat to her. Do I think Rashta is suffering from PTSD? I think it's possible that she's suffering from a mental illness, but not technically PTSD. Do I think she's the victim of the story? Absolutely not. Rashta has done some pretty bad things without even feeling remorse for them. She may even be a little crazy, but the victim of the story is something she is not. However, let's not let this distract us from the real villain of the story, Sylvia Sh